I've been depressed, I've been through pain You said you riding but switch lane And all these demons in my brain It's hard to figure out who changed I've been depressed, I've been through pain You said you riding but switch lane And all these demons in my brain It's hard to figure out who changed I know that people come and go But I never thought you switched up Another video. Hey y'all. As y'all can see, that's me playing on the TV. Now let's go. But today, today, today. Okay. Okay. So what gossip is popping? No, that gossip is cool. Oh yeah. Y'all can worry about food. So today, you already know what I'm about to get into. It's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of a story time. Because I'm going to give y'all like how to in a different video. But today I'm just going to be telling y'all how I was able to move into my first apartment at 18 years old. Because baby, it wasn't easy. It was not easy, okay? It all started with the thought, all I remember telling myself was that, okay, I want my own apartment. I want my own apartment. I was praying about it. I want my own apartment. I want my apartment. I was manifesting about it. I know I'm gonna get my apartment. I know I'm gonna get my apartment. So I started posting YouTube videos about it. So I posted, what am I gonna do after high school? I posted creating my vision board that is not on the channel for y'all to see no more. If y'all watched the last video, y'all know why that video is not currently up. And then next thing I know, I'm posting a video that says official unfurnished apartment tour. Guess who apartment it was? It's mine. As you can see, I'm in it right now. As you can see, that's me playing on the screen because it's my TV. So like I said, I was praying about it. I was manifesting about it. I was writing it down. I created my vision board. I was posting videos about it and stuff like that. So at the time, I didn't have my real mom. She's still alive. She's still out there. But I didn't have her, you know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. If you don't, that's a whole separate, that's a whole nother topic. My real dad has been locked up since I was like two years old or something like that. So I didn't have my parents to help me. Like, I did everything by myself. It was only me and my boyfriend, Dirt. Like, y'all know, y'all know. I'm adopted for those of y'all who don't know. So I was with my adopted parents for about... 10th grade to 12th grade. Towards the end of my 12th grade year, coronavirus hit whatever, and then we wasn't in school no more. And then coronavirus was getting bad, and then they didn't send us back to school or whatever. And I'm telling y'all the whole story right now, like from beginning to end. I might miss out some stuff, but. So when coronavirus was getting bad, and they were really about to shut down everything, Diamond wasn't going back to school either. So we are like, okay, well, why don't I go to Atlanta and why don't we be together instead of me being bored at home, like not doing nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? So I made her dad call my mom and ask, and my mom was like, yeah, you know. I think that flight, my flight was leaving that same night. Before the shutdown, like before they was really about to shut down everything in Miami, my flight left that night. I took an Uber to the airport, which was not what I was happy about. I'm like, come on, brother. Like, like I'm about to leave. Like, at least you can do at least you can take me to the airport. Like, so I was like, you know what, whatever. My flight was delayed. And I was like, bro, are you kidding me right now? Like, so my flight was delayed, whatever. Ended up getting on the flight, made it to Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for maybe three months. Something around that time frame. Like, I don't really remember the time frame. So in Atlanta, you know, I was vibing, I was chilling, and obviously I was missing dirt. So we were, we kept saying like, okay, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do this? Because I was ready, like after high school, I didn't wanna go straight to college. And I, I really wanted my own apartment. Like I wanted my own space, I wanted my own peace. Like I just wanted me and Dirk to be together in our own space. So I got a text message from my mom. My birthday was April 19th, which is about to come up again. Could your girl finna be 19? Okay, I'm finna be 19 on the 19th, okay. <laughs> so, the day after my birthday, I was still in Atlanta or whatever. My, my 18th birthday was a vibe. So the day after my 18th birthday, my mom, my adoptive mom sent me this text message. I'm not gonna keep it on the screen for a long time. And I'm just telling y'all what happened. And I'm telling y'all how I felt about it because it was my situation. Mind you, I was only in Atlanta 
until like, you know, coronavirus and everything slowed down. So we wasn't a lockdown no more. So my mom sent me that text message. I'm gonna read a little bit of it to y'all. So she sent me this message April 20th, I believe, at 9.36 p.m., okay? Mind you, when I was living with my adopted parents, like I could count on my fingers how many times I got in trouble. Like I wasn't a bad kid, I, I don't do none of that. Like I stayed in my room 99.8% of the time. I was in my room just chilling, just staying to myself, just mind my business. So she texted me, hey, since school's over, I know you're not in a hurry to come back to Miami. I converted your room into my little brother's room. I will still help you and all that we discussed. We never discussed her converting my room into, into my brother's until I moved out. By the way, when I went to Atlanta, the only thing I took was a suitcase and a book bag. That's not enough stuff to move out. Like my whole room, everything was still in my room. Oh, so she said, I just feel that now you are 18 and you basically graduated, that you were not too particular about being here. I haven't basically graduated because April, May, June, I still had two months of school left. And I didn't plan on being at, in Atlanta for those whole two months because coronavirus was, you know, stuff was starting to open up, even though it was a little bit too early, but stuff was starting to open up. So she said, I'm not taking it personal. I understand everything you said to me during our conversation because I put her on the line, I put my mom on the line, I put my godmom on the line. And I was like, listen, this is what's going to happen, and this is what's not going to happen. Like, I just let them know straight forward. I'm not in a rush to go to college, and my next step will be moving my own apartment. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know how fast I was going to do it. I did not know. The only reason why I'm really in this apartment is because of Dirk and God, and myself, of course. But she said, I will admit I was hurt by the way you left. But you just said you're not taking it personal. The reason I left was because coronavirus was shutting everything down and I went to go see my friend in Atlanta because I haven't seen her and everything was shut down. My friend and her dad, well Diamond and her dad brought it up to me and she said yes and that night I left. So I didn't leave no kind of way like. But when you called and kept me afford of everything, I felt a little better. Yeah, like I'm gonna let you know what's up. I'm not just gonna, you know. I love you and nothing that would change. You are not homeless and I haven't put you out. But if I was to go back to Miami, <clears throat> I would either be sleeping in the living room or didn't have nowhere to sleep. When I went back to Miami to get all my stuff, when I was moving into my apartment, all my stuff was in the living room. Nothing was in the closet. So I'm like, okay, where my stuff at? It's in the living room in boxes and bags. So I was like, okay, cool. So long story short, me and Dirk were apartment hunting. We were originally supposed to move to Atlanta, but another place had popped up when I was looking. So I had mentioned it to him. So I was like, okay, well, what about the place where we live now? And he was like, I was like, it's a little bit more affordable. Like it's our first apartment, whatever. And he was like, okay, let's do it. But I wasn't hundred percent serious. like. But like I said, it was still a little bit more affordable than moving to Atlanta right away. So that's what we did. Mind you, when she sent me this text message, nobody knows this, but I just remember after reading that text message and talking to them about it or whatever, it just caught me by surprise because first of all, I had only been 18 for one day. All of them were throwing that, oh, you're 18 now, you're 18 now. Like, but I remember telling them, like, why are y'all throwing this 18 card? Like, I just turned 18. You don't hear me saying, oh, now that I'm 18, oh, now that I'm 18. Like, even my real mom was doing it. Like, oh, you're 18 now. Like, I kept saying, like, what does that have to do with anything? So I remember just being in a room by myself. It was nighttime. I was shocked. Like I said, I had only been 18 for one day. And no, no hard feelings against my adoptive mom. Like, I still kick it with her all the time. Like, I still check on her. I check on my brother, like, all the time. But at that moment, I was just like, what is this? Like, what is she really telling me? Like, excuse me? So I remember just being in a room. I was on the floor, boo-hoo crying. Like, I remember I called Aisha because I just didn't know. Like, I was like, bruh, like, are you kidding me right now? 
So I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was like, bro, I really need to figure out something. I really, 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 really wanted my apartment, but I didn't know. I had never owned anything before. So I remember, you know, I was on the phone with Aisha. I was just telling her how I felt. And she was like, girl, like, this is the next step. Like, this is what you've been asking for. You've been asking for your own place. It's happening right in front of your eyes. So I remember just like, just praying, boohoo crying. I remember manifesting that night too. I was like, I know it, like I could feel it. I picture myself in my apartment. I know it's gonna happen. So then I went to Miami to go spend time with Dirk. As you can see in this video right here, I was in Miami. That was the first time I had went back. I went to go visit my friends. And then I also, like I was with Dirk we was at a hotel the whole time. Like I was there for a couple days. And then while I was down there, I went to go get my cap and gown. Like I did all that when I went to Miami the first time. So then the second time I went to Miami, it was like, okay, I'm in Miami because we about to move. So I remember um, Kathy, I don't think y'all ever seen Kathy on this channel, but Kathy is my other good friend I've been Friends who was in middle school. So Kathy, let me go get some water because your girl, <coughs> your girl throat. Mm -hmm. Kathy and them had went to Atlanta. So we was chilling with Kathy. We all had a B and B, like we was all chilling, whatever. When Kathy, she had drove her car. So she was gonna drive back to Miami. So I was like, you know what? It's time. Like I was like, you know, I'm gonna go back to Miami with you or whatever. So I was working for Diamond Dad at that time. And I remember him saying like, oh, if you leave, like, you know, you can't get your job back. So I was like, you know, it hurt me. Cause I'm like, damn, like, you know, if, if this don't work out and I gotta go back to Atlanta, like then what? Like I understand at the end of the day, business is business. But like, he just told me like, you know, you leave, you can't get your job back. You know what it is, what it is. But everybody thought I was playing, like literally. Cause at that time they were also trying to move into a house too. So they were trying to incorporate me in their plan. But I kept telling them, like I kept telling everybody I'm moving in my own apartment. I'm about to get my own apartment. But at that time, I really believed that nobody believed me, but I believed me. And I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I knew what was gonna happen. So, I told him, like, you know, it is what it is, you know, and I ended up going with Kathy to Miami. So we got to Miami or whatever, and that first night, instead of booking my hotel for that night and every day after that, I had booked my hotel for the next day, not even realizing it. So that night, I had spent the night at Aisha's house, and I remember, I remember just being in the backyard with her you know, and I was like, you know, what if this don't work out? I was like, what if... <sighs> but Aisha was somebody who has been with me. Like, she knows so much about me. Like, she's she's that girl. Then I have to go back to Atlanta. Then I'm going to look so stupid. Then, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I don't know how I'm going to get a job. If I go back to Atlanta, I don't know when I'm gonna move into my own apartment. And at that time, I, I was really missing dirt too. So I was like, I just want everything to work out. And I remember her just saying like, are you crazy? Like, why are you saying stuff like that? Like, you're here, like the plan is already moved. Like, you're already, you're already on the way to your apartment. And I remember just being so worried. I was so worried, y'all. I was so worried because I really just wanted everything to work out. And then, you know, we were just talking and just talking or whatever. The next day, my brother came to pick me up to go pick up my rental car. I went to go pick up my rental car and then I went to, where did I go? I think then I went to go check in my hotel room and then I went to go pick up Dirk. So me and Dirk are in the hotel room or whatever. So the first thing we needed was a car. So before I went to Miami when I left Atlanta, I did have a job. So I had I had a job in Miami, you know, so I was making a little bit of money from the job or whatever. And then Dirk had money saved up as well. So 
the first step we were like okay we have this rental car for a set amount of days we need a car we went to go see a couple cars and then we got our sports car so we went to go see the sports car or whatever and then like they wanted a higher price than what we wanted to pay i remember just being on the phone with the wife and i was trying to negotiate with her you know trying to compare prices and stuff like that so then we agreed on a price and then we went to go pick up the car. I went to go drop off the rental car while Dirk went to go pick up the, the, our car. When Dirk finally got back to the hotel room, you know, I saw the car and whatever, and I just couldn't believe it. Like, I remember sitting in the car downstairs by myself, and I just couldn't believe it. So after Dirk found the car, so after we bought our sports car, we were like, okay, the next step is securing our apartment. So we were online, you know, just still doing apartment searching. We went on apartment.com. We went on padmapper.com. We went on zillow.com, but we actually, actually found our place on apartment.com. We agreed on this place or whatever. I found the place and then we ended up agreeing on it. So I was calling them. I was like, listen, you know, we're first time renters. You know, we don't have any credit, you know, can we still be able to get an apartment? She was like, yeah, you got to send in your pay stubs, you know, send in a job offer letter or something, you know, proof of income. You got to put it on the deposit, you know, this is how much rent is. You got to submit your application, play your application fee, whatever, whatever. So I sat down, I did my part, then I sat down with Dirk and we did his part together. And then I remember we sent the application. We had applied for another apartment before that, but we submitted another application and paid the fee. But I don't know what happened to that one, whatever. So the apartment that we live in now was who I was really trying to communicate with or whatever. So we submitted our application. I am not joking when I tell y'all about nine minutes after they sent the application back, you're approved. <laughs> I kept reading it before I told Dirk anything I kept reading it and I was like bruh 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 like they did not just send me that proof like I'm telling y'all I kid you not it was probably nine minutes after we had submitted that application it said you are approved this is what we need your, your deposit um another proof of income like you know and I remember just telling him like no 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 like we're not approved like this is not this is not happening and i'm telling y'all like everything happened so fast it was literally god jesus christ like we did not do nothing like bruh and we did everything by ourselves me dirk and god everything by ourselves like no one was there to give us money no one was there to help us find an apartment no one there was there to help us find a car i'm pretty sure if we reached out someone would have helped but no one helped us. Like, it was literally us and that's it. So we got approved for the apartment or whatever. So we sent them the rest of the documents. And then um, it was time to move in. We got a move-in date or whatever. So we extended the hotel a little bit longer until it was time for us to um, head to our new home or whatever. So we drove to where we live now. And... We went a day before our moving date because the only thing we brought was our clothes, literally. Our car, mind you, we have a sports car, a two-door coupe. Trying to get everything in that car, the whole car was full. My chair was all the way up, like dirt was kind of uncomfortable too. Like our whole car and our truck was packed our clothes, our shoes, our hair products, our jackets, like the DVXL stuff, my purses, like we literally made everything fit in our car. We got to our hometown now at night before cause we didn't have a bed, we didn't have a TV, we didn't have no dressers, like we didn't have none, none of that. We slept at a hotel that night. So um, my dream, when me and Dirk were in Miami, I think we were in Miami for about two weeks, two weeks, before we moved to our new hometown. It was such a rough time for me. Like, 
I remember when we were in the hotel, I had one serious breakdown because I just, it was just so overwhelming. You know, we had a balcony, so I went out on the balcony, you know, I took some time for myself and it was, it was really overwhelming because this was it. This was it. It, it, it could either win completely right or completely wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I didn't want to go back to Atlanta. And I couldn't go back to a home in Miami because my room, I didn't have a room no more. So everything was just getting to me. So we got to our new hometown, we got something to eat, and we're like, okay, well, why don't we stop by our apartment? You know, we wanted to see the apartment before our moving date. So we came here, the complex was vibing or whatever, and then we went to our apartment door, you know, we saw it. So everything was cool. And then the next day it was time for us to move in. Um, we got here early in the afternoon or whatever and then they didn't accept cash so we had to go to the bank you know coronavirus so they had us standing in the hot sun we had to sign some papers and then we had to sign some papers electronically so it was that process was tiring too and then we had finally got our apartment keys and then like as y'all could as y'all see from my vlog or from Dirk's vlog, you know, when we actually got a chance to come in here and see everything for the first time, like it was just, it was just, it was like a dream. And it was honestly a dream come true because like I said, I did not know how we were gonna do it, how long it was gonna take. And if it didn't work out, I didn't know, if it didn't work out, I didn't know how much longer we were gonna have to wait. So we got here and then we had to go buy our bed. Like we got here early in the afternoon. So then that's when we went out to go shopping, you know, to buy some stuff, some cleaning products for the house. We recorded our videos. We had to buy our bed, we had to buy a TV. You know, it was just crazy. It was really, really, really crazy. Mentally, emotionally, like, it was just such, such a difficult time, such a hard time. We're doing everything by ourselves. And like I said, I kept telling everybody, you know, I'm about to move out. You know, we're getting ready to move out. Not knowing, me not knowing how we're going to do it. And, you know, everybody not really believing us. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just crazy. When we first got here, we only put our lease for seven months because we didn't know what we were walking into, you know what I'm saying? We did research on our neighborhood and we read all the reviews we could. My, oh my gosh, and that is crucial. Please read every single review you find when you move. When you're moving either from another city to city, state to state, like please read your reviews. So we read our reviews and everything, but we only um, got a seven month lease because we really didn't know what we were walking into. Like we're moving somewhere like Miami is all we know. So we're moving away to something that we didn't fully, fully know about. So we actually just renewed our lease for a year. Um, towards the end of the year, we might break our lease and move somewhere else. Just because by the end of the year, we're praying and manifesting that we'll be in such a better and higher position that we are now. You know, we might just wanna move and then we'll have you know, we'll have the ability to move if we want to. But that's how it happened, you know what I'm saying? But those are the most important parts. Those are really how it happened. And it's still crazy to me. Like, sometimes I just tell Dirk, like, I'm, it's so crazy. Because we, we really did it. And after we got over this, like, I know we will be able to conquer anything and everything especially together because we, man, it was so rough. And then we had to eat out every night because our hotel room didn't have no stove. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think we had a microwave. And I'm saying it and in my, in my head is still, still unbelievable. So just imagine when we get a house, like, I keep telling Dirk the next place I want to move into really, really is a townhouse. Because I like townhouses, especially before we get our real house. Because I don't know, I really want to move into another apartment. Like, it has to be a real luxury apartment to move into. But I really want a townhouse before we get our house house. But just imagine, when we get our house, bro, I'm going to just be sitting here like, I'm going to go sit in every room like, 
Yeah. So, thank you for watching this video, y'all. I hope y'all love my story. I just want to open up to y'all right quick and just tell y'all, you know, give y'all a rundown. Tell y'all what's going on. Tell y'all what happened. And um, I really, really hope y'all enjoy my story. If y'all want a video on how to get your own apartment or the steps you need, everything you need, or, you know, what you need to move in with, I will definitely give y'all that video. Just really, really, really let me know. But yeah, y'all, this is our story. This is my side of the story. Um, I hope I didn't hurt anybody feelings, really. But like I said, this is just how I felt at the time and what was going on in my head at that moment. So, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to tell somebody, tell somebody what? Huh? Huh? Tell somebody to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch our YouTube videos. I love y'all. There go Cam right there on the screen. That's my little brother for those of y'all who don't know. So, I love y'all and I hope y'all love me and I will see you in the next video. See you in the next video. We out, we out, we out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I've been depressed, I've been through pain You said you riding, but switch lane And all these demons in my brain It's hard to figure out who changed I've been depressed, I've been through pain You said you riding, but switch lane And all these demons in my brain It's hard to figure out who changed